Okay, so we have a colored version using layer styles to color it. And I've saved that as a JPEG that I can upload into PhotoBucket. So let me quickly review how you upload a PhotoBucket. We use Chrome, we navigate to PhotoBucket, we navigate to the correct folder, which for you guys is the Exercise 1 Cartoon Jumble folder. Problem is I'm not a student in this class, I'm the instructor. So mine should actually be in this instructor demonstrations folder. So what happens if you upload to the wrong place? Well, it's very easy, you are in control of this, to just drag and drop your work into a new folder. But when you do that, you usually have to retitle it. It will usually strip it of its title for whatever reason. But now that you guys have seen how you can upload into where students upload, I'll always be uploading into my instructor. So notice how it did strip my title. So I need to always make sure that my work has a title. So FA19 Carl. And now because I'm going to be adding other versions of this, I'm going to add the number one. This is my first version. And I want all of you to have a black and white version. Okay, next I go back to the, the main album of instructor demonstrations for this exercise. And I'm going to drag and drop in my color version my first color version, and then I'll show you another way you can color it. So this was coloring using layer styles. And once it comes in, it will come in at the end there, I'm going to title it. There it is. And I title it the same way. FA19 for fall 2019, my first name, and then I'm just going to give it the number two. And that way, it will always show up with my other work. Right. You're only required to have one submission for exercises, but you can submit multiples. Right. So I want this to actually go by title. And now you'll see they show up together. Cool. Okay. That is how you upload to PhotoBucket. Now what's another way I can color it? Well, I can use, instead of just creating the colors within Photoshop using layer styles, I could composite in color. So let me show you what that looks like. I'm going to go back to Google Chrome. Again, this is totally optional. I am going to pick, um, let's say, 1930s comic splash page. I'm going to use the tools. I'm going to make sure it's large. I'm looking for something that's even bigger than 2,000 by 2,000. Though that's pretty great. I might use this. This is just for the color. Oh, this one's good. I'm going to use that. All right. I opened it in a new tab. Now I'm going to open the image in a new tab so I can see the quality of the pixels. Yep, that's what I want. See that beautiful, we're going to learn how to do that. Offset lithographic printing, the halftone dots, the binday dots, the Gaussian roses. I'm going to learn all that stuff. All right, now I've saved that to the desktop. Now I'm going to bring that in and put it on top. And I, just like I did before, I'm going to mess with it. I'm going to stretch it. I might warp it like it's wrapping paper. And I'm going to wrap my whole... A cartoon jumble in this new texture, right? Then I'm going to rasterize it so I can delete from it. And now check this out. I go to my combined layer that I colored, right? That's all in one and cut out. I use the magic wand and I select the empty space with contiguous turned off. Now I take that empty space and I just change the layer. The selection's still there. And now I just hit delete. So what it did is it just cut my cartoon jumble out of that like fabric, that wrapping paper that I brought in. And what I can do is I can mix and match the layers just like I do with layer styles. I can play with opacity. I can play with blending mode. And I can then bring back these effects underneath and play with them. Like maybe bring up the gradient a little bit. So it's nice and warm. 
And what I get is this really pretty rich and unique, it changes to normal, coloring, right? Another effect you can add is a drop shadow. <laughs> it shows I've got an edge there I need to delete. That could be helpful. It's probably an edge of white pixels that somehow got missed. So that drop shadow is pretty clunky. I can edit it for sure. Take it down, um, not quite so spread out. And you can see that can be a nice little effect behind it. I'm going to take its opacity down just a little bit more. Maybe make it a little bit closer. So now it really does look like it's cut out. And then I'll save that. First, just, just hit save or command S. Once you've saved your PSD with your name, command S will keep updating it. And Photoshop does not auto save. So you have to save your work every once in a while. But then I go in and I say file save as, and then I'm gonna call this one dash color two. It's my second color version that I save as a JPEG to the desktop to put into photo bucket. And I wanna make sure it is fewer than five megabytes. And there it is. I'm going to mark that with yellow as well. Orange and yellow are kind of my things for photo bucket. Then I can go to photo bucket. Go back to instructors, demonstrations, drag and drop it in. I have too many windows open, so let me get to that one. And it will update. And then I need to name it. It's coming in. And it's always a little slow when we're all up uploading together. But there it is. And now I need to name it so it, it shows up with my others. And so I can get credit for it. So we first put in our semester code, FA19, and then your name. And then this is my third version of it, so the number three and they'll all show up. My black version, my colored with layer style version, and then my colored with um, external compositing version. And that's the beauty of digital art. It's incredibly versatile. You don't even need to know which one is your favorite. <laughs> you know, you just know that all these options are available to you. Okay, last, once you've done that, we need to organize our files, right? So in my master folder, I have this exercises folder and I'm gonna make a new folder for exercise one, cartoon jumble. I tend to be kind of hyper organized this way because I have a lot of images. And I'm gonna take my PSD, all the ones with my name, bring that into the folder. Those are the main files to keep. Then I'm gonna make a subfolder which I might call references. And these are all the downloads, even the ones I didn't use, even the Captain America that I definitely don't have intellectual property for, but no one can tell that, that this one is colored with a Jack Kirby Captain America, right, right? So the main thing of using other people's stuff is that you don't want them to be able to tell you use their stuff. That's transforming it into something original in your own. That's also why we used five sources instead of just two sources. The more sources you use to make into something original, the more you're creating and transforming into your own original work. And I feel like I could put that on a t-shirt and sell it and not worry about getting sued. Just like Arturo Herrera can do it with his murals, right? 
because even though it is from other people's work, I have transformed it through my own decisions into something that is not recognizable as someone else's work. Instead, it is my work. All right.